The New Testament Church welcomes you to join us as Pastor Majid Saloum leads us in seeking a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, changing us from glory to glory. Peace and grace. Two subjects I want to talk about, peace and grace. Before we start talking about that, I have a scripture from 1st Chronicles 29 verse 11. 1st Chronicles 29 verse 11. How many know God is in charge of every situation? So it says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. This is a good prayer when we approach God. Is to confess that he is. His is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord. And thou art exalted as head above all. So how many know God is in charge? And this writer, as he's addressing God, he says that everything is his. Heaven, earth, everything is the Lord's. And he's in charge of everything. I know the scripture says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. But what about the heaven? The heaven is the Lord. He created everything. Everything that came into existence belongs to the Lord because he created it. Amen. And uh, he's the most powerful person in the universe. That's why we call him God. God meaning mighty. And uh, we're told in the scripture also that uh, there's a reference to him as Almighty God. Almighty God means he is the Almighty, mighty. Or the mighty Almighty. Either way. Uh, Elohim, God, means the force above all forces. The power above all powers. So when we're dealing with God, he's got Man, he's got the might, the power above any power in the universe. That's our God. Amen. Amen. That's, that's really, when you think about it, that's our Jesus. Our God. Now, when we were first born into this world, we had needs of the flesh. Everybody had, had a need when they were a baby. You are born. Now you're an infant. You couldn't do a thing. Mom and dad, they had to do everything for you. Okay? Couldn't even walk. They had to carry you from one place to another. We all had needs. And God gave us mom and dad and family who supplied these needs. Now that we have been born again, born of the Spirit, we have spiritual needs. Born of the Spirit, you have spiritual needs. Born of the flesh, you have flesh needs. God fulfills the new needs. So I want to read two verses here from Romans chapter 5. And Paul lists some benefits that we have in God. Benefits as a result of our salvation. Or benefits of salvation. Romans 
5, 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Amen. So now we have peace with God. Why do we need peace with God? The reason is, is stated in verses 8 and 10. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us for if when we were enemies so we were enemies of God we need to have peace with God That's why we needed to have peace with God. It's because we were enemies of God. You know, because of sin, that caused us to be enemies with God. So, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. So, Jesus on the cross took away the sin. And if we are willing to place our full faith and trust in Him, God sees us as though we have never sinned or He sees us covered with righteousness. We are righteous. When we trust Jesus as our Christ, we find peace with God. He pursued us in our sin to save us from ourselves and from eternal separation from Him. We were eternally separated from Him before we, we got saved. And we needed to have peace with God so that He will bring us near. We draw near through the blood of Jesus, the Scripture says. When we surrender our will, quit running, quit resisting, and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and believe in him, we have peace with God. Aren't you glad you have peace with God? We have peace with God. This simply means that we no longer are at odds with God. The battle is over. Aren't you glad? Amen. 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 He paid the price. He did the work. We didn't have to do any work. We couldn't do it. But he supplied that peace between us and God. Now I want to talk about a different kind of peace that follows salvation. A little bit of a higher plateau. And it can go higher and higher. There's another level of peace available to us. That is the peace of God. Now, peace with God is different than the peace of God. You got it? Peace with God is different than the peace of God. See, peace with God puts us on his side. And that's salvation. Peace with God. But the peace of God differs in that the peace of God equips us with an indestructible joy 
regardless of the circumstances of life that we go through. We have indestructible joy. We have indestructible peace. We have God. We have Jesus living on the inside of us. We have the Holy Ghost power. We have peace. The peace of God. You can't have the peace of God until you have peace with God. But once you have peace with God, now you can have the peace of God. So, the peace of God equips us. Regardless of the circumstances of life. To be able to be strong. To go in every situation and just remain calm. No matter what happens. No matter what the bad news is. Or the good news. Doesn't matter what the circumstances is. You as a believer, knowing that God is in you, the the creator of the universe lives on the inside of you, what do you got to fear? What is there to be fretting about? Why be in turmoil when the Prince of Peace lives on the inside of you? The peace of God. Regardless of circumstances, you're one out of a million. They put a million people in a, in a place and every little thing affects them. But you as a child of God, having the peace of God, no matter what happens, they can take your picture, cover you with cameras, no matter where you are. Somebody sent me a a picture of me and my wife eating somewhere this morning. I saw it on my, on my phone. I mean, they watch you everywhere. They take your pictures. <laughs> How are you reacting to things? How are you handling life? Do you show up as one who knows who you are, knows your identity, You know who you are. You know that you are filled with the Holy Ghost power and the peace of God which passes all understanding. You become spiritually mature. We're talking about growing up and being spiritually mature. It's a depth and strength of faith that allows us to rest in God. No matter what, I'm at peace. I'm at rest. I'm at rest. Knowing that God is in charge. The universe belongs to him. He created it. He's in charge. He knows how to handle situations. The best thing you can do is step aside and let him handle it. Now, he, 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 he told some people in the Old Testament, he said, stand still. You know, stand still. Sometimes when we, we, when we stop standing still and we want to take matters into our own hands, we ruin the whole thing. So we have to learn to stand still. So no matter what happens in life, he's our shepherd. He's our king. He is in control of everything. Any circumstance that he has that has the potential to interfere, interrupt, or this largest from the protective arms of God. We have that peace 
the peace of God. We already have peace with God, but now we have the peace of God. Such a peace opens another door. I like that door that opens up because we have God's peace. His peace. Let's go to verse 2. Romans 5, verse 2. By whom also (coughs) we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Actually, this verse lists three assets. Access, grace, and rejoicing in hope. We have access. We have grace. And we need to stand in, in grace. And we rejoice in the expectation of the glory of God, the hope of the glory of God. Just imagine. Just imagine. We are never out of his reach. We have access. We are never out of his reach. We have access. We're just a prayer away. And since he takes up residence within us, it's always a local call. Now, I remember the days when my father was still alive. He'd call me from Israel. Collect call. I had to pay for it. Once I refused him. It was getting too expensive. And then after I thought about it, I said, well, I'm going to call him because it's cheaper to call him. So I know he will talk to me. But with God, you know, it's a local call. You don't have to change the uh, area code. (laughs) It's the same area code when when it comes to God, you know. We're in the same area code, no matter where you are. Same area code. By faith trusting in the person and completed work of Jesus on the cross gives us direct access to God. No reason to feel left out. No reason to be lonely. The whole family of God surrounds us. Now that we become born again, now we have a new family. A lot of them, uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters and and nieces and nephews and all that. In In the kingdom of God, I'm talking about. We call them all brothers and sisters. And we have him to talk to all the time. We have him to talk to all the time. And then according to this verse, we have grace. We have grace. Into this grace we stand. And the word grace, I looked it up in the Greek, comes from the Strong's 5485. The word is charis, C-H. A-R-I-S, charis or chariz, that's where we get the word charisma. 
1 Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts of the Spirit, the nine spiritual gifts. The word gifts is the same word, charis, charisma. Gifts. Can you think about the grace of God being a gift? It's nothing to do with works. Ephesians 2 8 says that we are saved by what? By grace through faith. Not of yourself. You didn't have to do it. You're not involved in it. God did it all for you. The whole works is done. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And I, I want to say something else. There's a, there's a difference between a grace and mercy. While grace is related to mercy, I believe that grace is more than mercy. So I'll give you an example of mercy. When you're speeding and the cop stops you, <laughs> and he doesn't give you a ticket, he says, just don't do it again. That's mercy. Now grace is when the cop stops you, you're speeding, and he doesn't give you a ticket, but he also invites you home for dinner. <laughs> That's grace. That's the grace of God. Grace is that unmerited favor of God. We don't, don't deserve to be in the family of God. We don't deserve to be in the body of Christ. But since we have peace with God, guess what? We deserve it all. And God uses his grace to transfer our sins and put him upon Jesus on the cross. And the same grace transferred Jesus' righteousness to us. So he took your sins and laid them on the cross, on Jesus, in his body he carried our sins, but he took the righteousness off of Jesus and put it upon you and me. So don't go around saying I'm a sinner. Don't negate what God did for you. Amen? Amen? So we are worthy to be numbered among his family. Worthy to be in the body of Christ. Because the grace of God transferred righteousness to you and I. Righteousness was imputed to us. Was given to us. It's a gift. The grace of God is a gift. It's God's gift. It is God's gift, God's grace that keeps us alive. It is grace that allows us to grow in Christ. It is grace that allows us to recover when we stray and when we fail. Grace is the greatest motivator that we believers have. Because scripture says grace is something that we stand in. It is an introduction to God's greater grace. It says more grace in, in James, but uh, other translations calls it greater grace. So that we can grow into it. Greater grace. A spiritual grace. Maturity. 
If somebody came to me and said, oh, I've been a Christian for 20, 25 years, 30 years, whatever, that, that really is not impressive as much as seeing someone who walks the walk, talks the talk, and walks the walk, and don't see them complaining and murmuring and finding fault with somebody. When I see somebody who has been a, a Christian for 30 years, and they're still complaining and still murmuring, and they haven't grown. So God's looking for his children to spiritually mature. And this spiritual maturity as we walk in him and in grace prepares us for God's surpassing grace that carries us through the transition of life from the temporary to the eternal. That's why we need that grace of God. We need to realize that it's not by might, nor by power. Now it's not the might of man, not the intelligence of man, not the ability of man. It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. If we can let the Holy Ghost reside in us, live in us, dictate to us, be led by the Spirit, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God, the sons of God. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken, give life to your mortal body by the Spirit which dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God is what brings us the grace of God. The Spirit of God is given to us. We didn't earn it. It's a gift, a free gift. He says, go wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Power to cast out devils, power to raise the dead, power to heal the sick, power to be able to be calm in the midst of the storm. Power, the peace of God. Thank you for watching this edition of Glory to Glory. We would appreciate your prayerful support of our ministry. You're welcome to join us at the New Testament Church, 6772 Lamphere Road in Rome, Fridays at 730 and Sunday mornings at 9 and 10.30. From the New Testament Church and Pastor Majid Saloon, may the power and blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ